Hi everyone, welcome back to Be Rich. It's me Vinod here and I'm recording remotely again from Bangalore. So, what did I want to talk about today? Today I want to talk about something different. Usually I talk about markets and I talk about shares, company news, things like that. So today I thought I'd do something different and talk about personal finance and how you should be approaching your personal finance and ways to create wealth is through personal finance. One of the most important things to creating wealth is to make sure that you have enough savings to take that and invest and make that grow for you. And today I'm going to give you seven ways, seven rules maybe for saving money. You can use these rules as you wish. You can change them. You can implement them the way you want. Like any idea of a framework such as diet or weight training, it is not one plan fits all. It's individuals based on your situation circumstances. You have to mix and match and see what works best for you. So same way, keep that in mind. These rules are not set in stone. Try and use them as more like guides and inspiration points to see how you can maybe look at saving money yourself and investing. The first rule which I want to talk about is known as the 50-30-20 rule. The 50-20-30 rule is 50%, 30% and 20%. That makes a total of 100%. So this is basically saying, let's take your monthly income, be it either through business or through a salary, depending on where you get your income, monthly income. You take 50% of that and that is for your needs. Your needs can include housing, insurance, basic utilities, transportation and food. These are your needs. You need food to live. You need a place to stay. That's your housing. You need basic utilities, which is electricity, internet, and whatnot. And of course, you need transportation. You can't survive without these. You cannot generate income without these. So that's your nose and your needs. So make sure that whatever your monthly income is, that only 50% is spent on this. So if your rent is too high and it's crossing or it's eating into the rest of this, then you need to reconsider where you're staying. Or in turn, let's say your electricity bill is very high, then you need to reconsider how, you sp- how much you're spending on electricity, same way with food and transportation. So keep this in mind when you're thinking of what this 50%, that your needs should stay within this 50%. Now let's get to the next 30%. What is this? These are your wants. Wants, what does it mean? Wants is travel. That means for pleasure. For leisure. Two is fashion. You know, buying clothes, buying what not. Things which you want. Gear. Let's say you want to buy a camera, a laptop. That is where this 30% is. And the last would be entertainment. Let's say you want to go for movies. You want to go for a trip somewhere. You know, go for a day trip for the weekend. All that falls into this bucket. And this is 30% of your salary or your monthly income. So 30% has to be allocated from this. So let's say you want to buy a laptop or you want to buy a phone or you want to buy anything. You need to save within this 30%. So you need to forego some entertainment. You need to forego something so you can start saving that in this 30%. So keep that in mind. And the last 20%. The last 20% is, is where the cream or where your future wealth is going to be created. This 20% is towards your investment, towards your retirement, towards your, as I say, freedom plan to get away from the cycles of monthly expenses, you know, and creating a pathway to your freedom where you find you free of this requiring so much of money or feeling the fear of not having enough money. So this is the 20%. And if you already have existing debt, this is where that first 20% will be spent on is lowering all your debt be it personal loans, be it credit card loans, be it anything other than housing loans. Home loans can stay. That will go into your housing, so don't get confused. Same way, car loans can be under transport. doesn't have to be here. So this debt payment is all your other debt, which is eating away into your, preventing you from saving. All those get closed here, and then you start saving for your emergency fund. After you've done your emergency fund, then you slowly move into creating your retirement plan, your freedom plan, as I was saying. So this is the 50, 30, 20 rule. Next rule which you can look at is something known as the 1% rule of impulse buys. So all of us suffer from this. Anand talks about it, that, um, you know, the marshmallow test, as he says, we all suffer from impulse buying. And uh, one of the best ways to stop yourself from impulse buying is is using this rule known as the 1% rule. So let's say you have a gross income, yearly income of X amount. You take 1% of that. So let's say your gross income, yearly income is, let's say, 12 lakhs. 
the impulse rule is 1%. So 1% of 12 lakhs is uh, 1% would be 12,000. So if it's below 12,000, you can look at buying it. No problem. Go for it. If it's more than 12,000, then you have a cool off period of three days. You wait for three days and see if you really need to buy it. That means for three days, you don't think about it. Three days, you move on with your life. And then you come back, visit it after three days and see, hmm, do I really need to do this? The reason why we do this is more often than not, when you give yourself a cool off period, you suddenly realize you really didn't need to buy it or there's some other way to work around it. and You really don't need to acquire it. So this helps us to realize the difference between wanting something and needing something. If it's something you want, then you don't need to buy it because it's just a want. It's not something which you require to survive. If it is a need, let's say it's some kind of an important equipment or an important kind of an expense which is required for your basic necessity, for your livelihood, then you need to figure out how to do it. So this cool off period allows you to figure out if it's a want or a need. So this is the 1% rule. You might find it useful. If you want to tweak that rule and make it 2%, whatever works. The point is to help you cut down your impulse buying because impulse buying is one of the main reasons why we tend not to save, why we tend not to invest because we have an impulse at that moment when we have a bit of saving and we feel like spending it on something else. So this is what the 1% rule is supposed to help. Next, we all wonder how long is it going to take? How long is it going to take for us to double our money, triple our money? So there's an interesting rule known as the 72 rule. The 72 rule is you take the interest or the rate which you're compounding at your growth of your investment and you divide 72 by that and that will give you the number of years you should take for your money to double. The simple mathematic rule is an arithmetic rule which you can use to help yourself stay motivated into your investment and seeing if the growth which your investment is growing at is enough for you to reach your goal. So let's say you need X amount of money in nine years time and you've been investing and let's say your compounding rate is at eight percent so how long will you be able to meet this in nine years so take 72 divided by eight that is nine years and yes you'll be on target to meet your requirement same way you take nifty is giving a let's say a return of 12 percent and you've been investing you want to know how long will it take for your money to double take 72 and divide it by 12 and you land with six years and that's how long it will take for you to double your investment so this is a very interesting rule or a thumb rule to have to let you know how long it's going to take for your investment or how long it's going to take you to reach your goal. Another way you can uh, look at investing is a lot of employers uh, give you in India provident fund and uh, super anonymity. There are different ways employees you know, encourage employers encourage their employees to join their company. So you can also look at in a way that your company contributes towards your retirement in a more fulfilling way for you and you can negotiate this as part of your salary. I know this is a little unconventional to think of but other than your PF and all this you can talk to your HR or company which you're planning to join and say towards my retirement I would like you to contribute like this or contribute like that so it structures a plan so it's part of your salary package so your investment so you don't get derailed by your own expenses and your own impulses and it's taken out of your salary and it's already invested for you. This is something to think about. Like I said, this idea is a little unconventional, but you can think about it. Next comes rule number five, which is your emergency fund. Most people say emergency fund should be three times your monthly expenses. I like to be safe and say six times. So let's say your monthly expenses is X amount, Y amount. You should have at least six times that tucked away, squared away, squirreled away into an account, which is extremely liquid and easily accessible in case of an emergency. Emergency could be a job loss, it could be a national disaster, could be anything which you can constitute as an emergency, which prevents you from getting a monthly income. This could be like a pandemic, lockdowns happen, or it could even be a national disaster like floods happen and you lose your job for a few months because you're a gig worker and you're not going to land any gigs for a few months thanks to the weather or the situation. So this allows you to continue surviving, continue paying your bills. So this is why I say keep it as six months. Rule number six is... Automation. Automation is for people, like I said, this is closely related to the idea number four, which is talking about it. So your employer doing it for you. In this case, if you are, let's say, a person who's earning most of your income through other gigs or you don't have a fixed salary, then you should have something known as an automation rule. But every month on a certain date, 
a certain amount of x amount of money is taken out of your account and automatically invested for you so this prevents you from tripping yourself and missing an opportunity to invest where this automatically goes on autopilot regardless of all the things that's happening and all the other ways you're saving you continue investing steadily in a pace which is manageable for you like i say a lot of my friends who have a who are at my age who will have a driver who will have you know a cook who will have means working at their homes i say put your retirement as one more person you employ and that person that way it's easy for you to count because you don't worry about your driver's salary you don't worry about your maid or your cooks you know those are expenses which need to be met and you meet them same way put another ex employee in your payroll for your house and say that is your retirement and start investing or your freedom plan and start investing in that so it's a way to mentally work yourself around so you don't trip yourself up and prevent yourself from growing wealth for yourself the last one is an interesting rule to have which is all of us in this current world tend to acquire and accumulate and amass things way beyond our need and there's lots of wasteful savings i mean not savings a lot of wasteful expenses which we do and we tend to hoard things in our lives so this rule is something to help you realize that maybe you don't need to buy something this is known as one item in one item out this is a very simple rule that means for every single thing you buy you have to get rid of one thing let's say you're buying a new shirt a new pant then you must look at getting rid of something which you already have the funny thing is when you start analyzing what you need to get rid of suddenly you realize you can't get rid of anything and suddenly there's no requirement to buy that other item this is an item in item out this will hopefully minimize the amount of footprint you're creating in this world and let you enjoy your life with more experiences and accumulating things as well my hope is anyway these are seven kind of rules which i thought of which i'll share with you today and i hope you found some of it informative and entertaining to say the least hope you're able to adapt some of them or at least use it as a point of inspiration to improve your saving habits and spending habits in your own life thank you for watching the video it's a bit of a digression from my usual video about markets and stocks and shares and analysis i hope you did like this and uh, do let me know in your comments what did you think about today's video thank you it's a great privilege and honor that so many of you in thousands have subscribed to my channel and have supported me i have written two books in english the alchemy of money and ordinary stocks extraordinary profits these books are published by us and are ready if you want to procure a copy send us a message to the whatsapp number given below and my team would respond to you if you want an amazon kindle copy you can click the link below finally those who wish to consult with me can send a mail to berichenglish@gmail.com once again i thank you for your support If you like this video press the subscribe button of my channel hit the like button and turn on the bell notification